last week's lesson. Who was the man in the lesson? Anything that we did. You wasn't here last week. But you weren't here. Yes, I was. No, you weren't. I could guess. Okay, you can guess. You can guess. It was a man. It was a man, is, and his his name starts with the same letter as the word man. Dan. No, that's Ryan. Dan. That's what? Dan. No. A name. Panther. No, no, that's the ending. That's the ending. The beginning. Chicken and pie. Don't be silly. I don't guess he was. But you're not guessing. He starts with man. I didn't say rhymes with man. It starts, starts with, with the same, same letter, letter as, letter as man. man. And it's in the Bible. No. Alistair. It's in the Bible. Chicken word, and pie. Word, letter, word. All right, Allie. Do you remember? Yeah, it's Moses. Moses. That's right. Moses. We learned a bunch of things about Moses. And do you remember? Um, I think. I know Alistair and, Ag and, and Athena were not here, but uh, the rest of, well, many of you were here. What else? What did, what else did we do? What did we do at the beginning of the lesson last week? We had we had a little object that we were doing stuff with. Remember, I, I sat down and I had some. Remember now, Wyland, Play-Doh, and we were shaping it. Right, we could shape it into whatever we wanted, and we talked about how God can shape our lives. God can shape our lives into what he wants, and he shaped Moses' life. Now Moses, so where was Moses in our lesson? He was in two different countries. Do you remember? Where, in what country was Moses born? I don't know. I'm sorry? Egypt. That's right. Ancient Egypt. Very good, Marlon. So Moses was born in Egypt. Moses says, I don't know, I'm, I, don't, I didn't study it out exactly, but like his great-great-grandfather moved into Egypt. And when his great-great-grandfather moved into Egypt, there was just about 70 or 80 of them, plus some servants and helpers. It was just a big family. A, great, a pretty big family moved into Egypt, but after Alistair... Okay, after several generations, by the time Moses was born, there was over a million of them. Over a million of them. And you remember at the end, God told Moses that he had heard all of his people's cries and prayers and that he was going to deliver his people from Egypt and he was going to send Moses to do it. We talked about that and Moses had a bunch of kind of excuses. He said, I can't do that. What will I say? Who will I tell him sent me? I can't talk. Can somebody else do it? He had all those excuses. But what happened is that God was gracious and merciful and patient with Moses. And he, Moses and Aaron, his brother, went into Egypt. And God used them to lead all of that huge family now, over a million. By this time, 80 years after Moses was born, 2 million people out of the land of Egypt. Now, what country? We're remembering that from last week. Now, this week, what country do we live in? America. What's the name of our country? America. United the United States, States of, America. of America. The United States of America. And in our country, we have a we we have a <laughs> constitution. And the constitution rules our land. Our constitution our Constitution tells us that we can have a president, and we can have legislators like senators and representatives and judges. In Indiana, we have a Constitution that tells us we can have a governor, and all those people, they make laws, right? They make laws, and everybody has to obey the laws, don't they? Well, they're supposed to obey the laws, right? What happens if somebody doesn't obey the law? They go to prison. Well, it depends on how bad the how 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 bad the breaking the law. Felony, they go to jail. So it depends on what kind of law it is. But if you break the law, why do we have laws? Like why do we have laws? Serenity? Um, 
Right. So, so, so that we don't get hurt. If, if, if un, everybody can just do whatever they want, then I could hurt, hurt you and it wouldn't matter, right? Or you could hurt me and it wouldn't matter. But we have laws, and if everybody obeys the laws, then everybody is safe. Right? The actual term for that would be anarchy. Well, if everybody's doing their own thing, it would yeah. be. But we have laws, and if everybody obeys the laws, then everybody should be happy and safe. And um, everything okay? Listen. And all those things are against the law, aren't they? Okay. All those things are against the law. So we have laws, and we obey those laws. So in America, we have a constitution. The constitution is our law. The governors and the presidents and the judges all are supposed to obey the constitution, and the laws they make, we have to obey. And when we don't obey them, it's not good. It's not a good life. Either we're running from the people that are enforcing the law, or we're caught by the people that are enforcing the law, and we have to pay fines or go to jail and and all of that. Now, back to the people, God's people, the Israelites. Moses led all these people, and what whose what laws did they obey when they were in Egypt? Tricky question. I mean, they were slaves. So they were slaves. Had, they, there had to be laws. So oh. what, they were in the country of Egypt, so what laws did they obey? Paying taxes. No, well, whose laws? What country's laws did they obey when they lived in Egypt? Egypt. Egypt, that's right. Oh. Yeah, so I was, I that was too... Up. I know, I know. So they obeyed all the laws of Egypt, kind of. They had to because they were slaves and, and they had special rules that said they had to do things that other people didn't have to do. But then God took them out of Egypt. And if they're not in Egypt anymore, what laws would they obey? They didn't have a country. They weren't a country. They were just a family that grew to two million people. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We got to a certain place in the wilderness and Moses came to the people of Israel and said, God brought you out of Egypt. He freed you. He redeemed you from all the rules and the persecution in Egypt. And he wants to be your God, your ruler, and he wants to bless you. And so all the leaders of Israel, all the people said, yes, we want God to be our leader and to bless us. And Moses went back, or came back to the people of Israel, and he said to them, God says, God says that he will bless you, but he has laws, he has rules that he wants you to keep. And you know what all the people of Israel said? They said, everything that God says for us to do, we will do. Now that's a good thing. We should all do whatever God says. God is the perf most perfect, the only perfect ruler. And the people, so the people of Israel said to God, said to Moses, all that, that the Lord has said to do, we will do. And so Moses went back up into the mountain. And we can't see it here. We don't know exactly what it looked like, but the Bible tells us, and so we know it's true. The Bible says that a big cloud, a dark cloud came over the mountain and lightning was coming out of it and billows of smoke and that was symbolized the, the presence of God. It came on the mountain and God called Moses up into the mountain and God gave Moses ten laws. We call them, in fact he called them, commandments. The ten commandments and God's commandments are for holy living. So we have laws in America, and if we obey the laws, we have a good life, right? If we disobey the laws, there's trouble. And it's the same with God. God was giving his laws to his people, but these laws are eternal. They're even longer than his people. And these laws, he said to his people, you obey these laws, and I will bless you. You will have a good life. But if you disobey these laws, you will not have a good life. And these laws are still true for us today. So, 
I'm going to quickly, I've got two or three words for each law to help us understand them. So there's ten of them. The first one is this. And with this cloud, just this represents God. And the first law was no other gods. No other gods. Well, in Egypt, do you know how many gods there were in Egypt? I don't. But there was lots and lots. They worshipped the sun, they worshipped the moon, they worshipped frogs, they worshipped snakes, they worshipped all kinds of different things. But they didn't even know what those gods wanted. And this is the perfect thing about God. God is God. He's the only true God. But he also tells us what he expects. All the other gods, they didn't know what these make-believe fake gods, they didn't know what they wanted. They just thought, oh, the God must be mad at me, so I have to bring an offering. The God must be mad at me, so I need to do this. But God tells us what he expects from us. And the first one was no other gods. That makes things simple, doesn't it? We don't have to worry about whether we displease anyone else as long as we're pleasing God. Because he's the only God. There's only one God, no other gods. The second thing is no idols. Now we don't see idols around us very much anymore. But what they would do with an idol, there would be an idol, and they would bow down to the idol. And what would they do when they're bowing down to the idol? Yeah, like that. But in their mind or with their mouth, what might they be doing? They would be praying, right? So, this would be like no praying to idols. or no. If there's only one God, who should we pray to? God. God. So the second one is saying, don't pray to anything else. Don't. Don't depend on anything else or anyone else. Depend on me. So no other gods, no idols. The third thing, this is a mouth, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the third, the, pretty much, there's different ways to say it, but we're going to say honor God's name. Not just don't curse, because there are curse words, there's blasphemy, there's vul- vulgarity, there's a lot of different ways that we can say things bad with our mouth. But in particular, this is, Honor God's name. Don't blaspheme his name. Don't say his name in vain. Don't say it right. And you know what? Even today, in this room, this morning, I've heard God's name said in vain. It's, we, we don't even understand. Our, the world around us, the world that each and every one of us lives in, says God's name, and they don't even thinking about him. They say, oh my God. All right then, I was thinking about God. I was telling you what, what's the wrong thing to do, but how many times do we we see something surprising and we just say that? We're not thinking about God. That, that's law number three. Honor God's name. The fourth one, we're going to say honor God's day. How many days are in a week? Seven. Seven. <coughs> God took six days to create the world, and on the seventh day... Bible says he rested, or he stopped. He set aside one day out of the week to be his. He expects us to work, to go to school, to do all of our things six days a week, and on the seventh day is his day. And so we should honor his day. So no other gods, no idols, honor his name, or his names. How many, just speaking of that, how many times do we hear people say Jesus' name? Listen, people say Jesus' name, and they're not thinking about Jesus. That's not honoring his name, is it? So honor his name, honor his day, and then the next thing is to honor your parents. To honor your parents. The commandment, God's commandment, the way to have a happy life is to honor your parents. That's number five. Honor your father and your mother. And the rest of her says, so that your days can be long on the earth. Now, some people don't honor their parents, and they do live a long time. But lots of times, people that don't honor their parents, they go off and they do their own thing, and they end up breaking the law, and they end up doing things that their parents would never want them to do, and they end up with a shorter life. God says, honor your parents. Honor your parents. And honor your parents is even more than obeying them, isn't it? It is. If your mom comes over and says, time for lunch, and you go, oh, 
I want to play. That's not honoring your mom. When it's, if mom says, time for lunch, she says, okay, mom, what's for lunch? That's honoring mom. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Besides just obeying. So, first law, no other gods, no idols, honor God's name, honor God's day, honor your parents. Number six, no murder. No murder. Thou shalt not kill. No murder. Thou shalt not murder. Now listen, the Bible does say that if a man takes, if somebody kills somebody else, that the government should take their life. So the Bible says there's sometimes when somebody should be killed. But we should never take it upon our, ourselves to kill somebody. No murder. And I don't think anybody in here has murdered anybody in real life. But you might play games where it's just normal to do that. And that's not a very good thing. That's not a good thing to practice. No murder. Then, number seven, no adultery. No adultery. So there are certain things that men and women do together when they're married. Listen. Certain things that, that God says men and women should do together if they're married. But he says that no one should do that unless they're married. If somebody's acting like they're married and they're not, that's adultery. If a man is acting like he's married and it's not his wife, maybe it's a lady at work <coughs> or a lady doing something with some man and it's not her husband, that's adultery. It's not funny. It's one of God's laws. No adultery. Number eight. What's it look like this guy's doing? Stealing. Yep. And the and the eighth commandment is thou shalt not steal. No stealing. We pretty much know what stealing is, don't we? What is this one? Number nine. Whispering. Whispering. No talking. Sometimes it happens that way. It is do do not bear false witness. Have you ever said something about oh, someone else strange. that's not true? That's a lie. Thou shalt not lie. But the verse is actually, thou shalt not bear false witness. If you say something about someone else, and it's not true, you've broken the ninth commandment. And then, the tenth commandment, this one is not so easy to, to understand from the picture, but I'll explain it. It is no coveting. Now, the, to covet is to want something that's not yours. So in this picture, this boy owns a horse. This person owns a horse. And this person is, I wish I had his horse. He wants that other person's so horse. Envy. envy. Envy could be related. Coveting envy. Want, envy is when we, well, anyway, we won't go into all that. But yes, coveting. Wanting something that is someone else's. There's nothing wrong with needing to buy a car and wanting a car. But if you want, I want that person's car. I have to have it. And, and anyway, so no coveting. Now these were the laws that God gave the children of Israel in the wilderness. He said, you, they said, yes, we will obey everything that you tell us. We want to be a, your people. We want to be a nation. And you will be our judge. You will be our ruler. You will be our king. And so he laid down the laws and he said, if you obey these laws, you will have a happy life. No other gods, no idols, honor my name, honor my day, honor your parents, no murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lying, and no coveting. All those rules, even though we're, none of us are Israelites, the, the, the nation of Israel that God is the king of doesn't exist today. But in the Bible, he gave these laws and every one of us still need to obey these laws. Every one of us still need to have no other gods except him. We should not pray. We should not, we should not depend on something other than God for our needs. 
He's given us abilities to work. He expects us to work, but we should we should not have we should not worship any anyone but God. We should still honor His name. We should be careful, even our young selves, our nine, ten, eight, eleven year old selves. We should be careful that we don't say God's name when we're not talking about Him, when we're just expressing a interjection. We should honor His day. We should honor our parents. That's still a loop. That's still a commandment from God. No murder. In, in the New Testament, Jesus said, if you hate somebody, it's like you're killing them. So we shouldn't hate somebody. Adultery. Looking on a woman and watching her before you're married, or if she's not your wife. That's sin. That's breaking God's commandment. <clears throat> Stealing. It's still a sin. Saying things that are false about somebody else. That's a sin. And covetousness is a sin. So each one of us, and the way you guys are reacting, some of you, some of these things, you know. And you know that for you, you need to stop doing some things. I'm not saying you do it all day long. But you need to stop doing some things. If you're going to obey God's Ten Commandments, you need, you need to stop. You need to obey God. Now, you know what? Long story short, no one who ever lived ever kept all of those Ten Commandments except Jesus Christ Himself. You can't keep all those commandments. I can't keep all those commandments. God expects us to. He wants us to. When we do, or to the extent that we do, as much as we do, we can have a happy and peaceful life. But we can't do it by ourselves. Only those who have turned from their sins, like, those things are sins. I don't want to do those anymore. And believed on Jesus. Jesus forgives those sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. He gives us eternal life. And that is a heavenly life, a spiritual life. And the Holy Spirit comes into us. And when we are want to do something, the Holy Spirit helps us say no to the wrong things and helps us say yes to the right things. So there's ten laws. There's a bunch more, but there's ten like constitutional laws, the top of the top laws, that if we follow those in our lives, as soon as we've believed on Jesus and he gives us the, the ability to follow those, we can have a happy and blessed life. And let's just review them. Number one... No other gods. Number two, no idols. Number three, honor God's name. Number four, honor God's day. Number five, honor your parents. Number six, no murder. Number seven, no adultery. Number eight, no stealing. Number nine, no lying. And number ten, no coveting. So think about those things. Don't just laugh. <clears throat> think about them. And think about what you, yeah, in your mind. And think about trying to remember those things when we leave here. Or even while we're still here. And keeping those commandments that God has given the Israelites and he's given them to us.